This is where the fun begins. General Kenobi! <laughs> Hello there. Hello and welcome to Jedi Knights, the official Star Wars podcast for Joy Clicks. Uh, my name is Mike Connors, and as always, I have my illustrious co-host and uh, normally is the host of this podcast, Christian Buckley. How are you, my friend? I'm doing well, Mike. How are you? I'm doing good. You know, uh, haven't been watching any Star Wars recently. Mm-hmm. That's the that's the thing I always think about when we do these intros here. Mm-hmm. And and yeah, I haven't really been on the grind to be honest you know what i did do what's that i haven't started it yet but i did reinstall because i had it before and i tried it for like 20 minutes and then i was like i'm not feeling this right now i reinstalled galaxy of heroes on my phone oh okay all right because i was like i've reached that point of this year where i'm trapped inside where i'm like you know what there's some times where i just don't feel the energy to even play a game so i'll play a mobile game so we're there we go have you ever p- played the uh, like the tops trading card Star Wars game? In high school, me and a few of my friends were really big into the that. You know, we could use our phones at lunch, so when we pulled the phones out, it was always like, okay, we're gonna just crack some packs on a <laughs> the tops trading card game. That that was really fun because like you could like trade like cards with other people. I think like the app still exists. Yeah, I and, bet. like you could. I, I kind of want to like just re-download the app and see if like all my cards still exist because I bet they're uh, bet they're worth something now. Yeah, <laughs> who knows? Uh, anyways, we got a really uh, meaty podcast here today. I think it's probably one of the most news-heavy podcasts in Jedi Knight's history. Mm-hmm. What do you think about that? Yeah, I would agree because like Jack and I also on Joy Clicks do a Marvel show. We've had periods of time with the Marvel show where it's like, hey. The, mcu new phase we're going through a bunch of announcements star wars hasn't done that you know they've been like hey clone wars is back you know we've yeah, done things like, like that level but nothing that nothing this major no we always get like one at a time maybe two at a time for lucky with star wars right so but uh yeah we got a lot to talk about uh but first i think we should start this podcast episode off the way that we always do uh with from the jedi archives this is the segment of the show where both christian and i take uh, a piece of star wars lore a character a place you know an object what have you uh we take the with the wikipedia page and we educate each other on it so uh christian why don't you go first here uh on this on this uh edition here sure uh what i have pulled is the loth wolf very nice okay uh, Loth wolves were sentient canine predators native to the planet Lothal. Loth wolves had a special connection to the Force and Lothal, to which they acted as the guardians of the light side of the world. By the time of the Imperial Era, Loth wolves were widely believed to be extinct, yet in one BBY, members of the Spectre's Rebel Cell encountered Loth wolves while undertaking an undercover, undercover mission on the planet for the Rebel Alliance. Um, Very nice. They average about two and a half meters tall, about six meters long, uh, ranging hair color from, you know, the typical wolf color you'd expect, but they're basically wolves. They're space wolves. Space wolves. Um, and I think Ezra Bridger had a connection with them, right? Mm. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. What, what made you pick that? Because I was thinking about Dave Filoni, and I know Dave Filoni just likes wolves, and I remember... Yeah. It was like, yeah, he created those so that he could just have space wolves in Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, no, they they show up in Rebels a lot. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, that that's an interesting that's an interesting pick there. Thank you. What about you? What do you pick? I picked uh, the one and only the T sixteen Skyhopper. Are you familiar? I am. Uh, have we have we pulled this before? I don't, I don't think, think so. Yeah, so th- anyways, this is like one of the earliest things uh, in Star Wars lore. Uh, Luke Skywalker actually had a model of it that he was like flying around in one of the earliest scenes in the original Star Wars. He uh, even said that he used to bullseye Womp Rats back in his uh, in his T-16 back at home. Uh, so, you know, it's been, it's been in the lore, folks. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were personal repul- repulsor lift airspeeders manufactured by Incom Corporation, recognizable by its distinctive tri-wing design. They kind of look like the Imperial transport shuttles. Sure, uh, yeah. So, yeah, kind of interesting stuff. Uh, pretty cool that Luke, Luke Skywalker had one. Um, 
or maybe he maybe he didn't i have no idea yeah maybe uh, he was just trying to like gas himself up because i don't know if like the type of work you know the uh the lars family was doing would be able to afford one of those things yeah but then like you know he hopped in the x-wing and he he was pretty nice with it so you have to assume that like it's all in the blood some... mike it's all in the blood <laughs> yeah but i mean like you know <laughs> yeah he must have had some sort of training christian mm-hmm. like let's be real but yeah no uh who do you think's a better pilot anakin or luke oh anakin easy yeah easy okay yeah uh moving on no I'm just kidding <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so we got a lot of news to, to go through, and obviously we're going to get to the big news, all of the new shows that were announced later, um, and also our, our episode um, recap as well. But let's go through some of the, the smaller bits and pieces here, uh, just uh, picking up the crumbs. Christian, um, I know you did a video on Star Wars 1313, correct? Yes, I did. It's been back in the news recently. Yes, it has. Do you want to explain for uh, the audience? Sure. So, uh, Corey Barlog is the director of the most recent God of War game, which is very good. Uh, he's he's very active on Twitter. You know, he's a writer, he's a creative director for video games. A uh, big Star Wars guy. I know he's usually tweets out about the Mandalorian. And I want to say a couple days after the Boba Fett episode, he tweeted out like, Hey, if somebody, if some developer out there isn't making a Mandalorian game where you can travel the galaxy, upgrade your Beskar armor, take bounties, what are we even doing? Um, that caught the attention of a few other devs in the industry um, that were like, that'd be so cool. It'd be cool if you made that <laughs> game. Um, and then I believe Celia Hodent, who used to work for LucasArts, said, yeah. we tried. And it was, she showed a picture of Star Wars 1313. <laughs> Yeah, there was also like a crying face emoji, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which is pretty funny. Um, yeah, but, you know, I was reading a GameStop, uh, GameSpot article about this, um, actually. And there was a bit more to it. Uh, so she also said that... Uh, well, actually, de- one of the other developers on 1313 worked on that game. And he responded to Hoden saying, If only people could have seen what was coming. And then Hoden, the LucasArts dev who originally started all this off, said, uh, quote, it was very painful for the team. It won't get revived. It was canned too many years ago now, 2013. There was still a lot of work ahead, but what we had was magical. I'll admit, I might be biased. So sure. that's kind of interesting. Uh, mm-hmm. Now, you... oh, go ahead. No, no, what were you going to say? I was going to say, I don't know if I buy it that it's not going to come back. Like, I, I don't think I buy that. I was just about to say, do you think that we're going to see something like this? Uh, do you think it's going to like be uh, directly inspired from this? Do you think it's going to be something co- kind of different? Like, uh... so let me throw this out there. I like that Darth Maul game that was also rumored, and we did see a little bit of. That's oh, gone. the one that I'm obsessed with. Yes, the one that, that one's I'm... gone. I'm sorry, Mike. Yeah, whatever. Um, but I feel like Boba Fett is still so unexplored in that middle ground in like the rebels era where a 1313 game or like revitalizing based on the idea of 1313 is not out of the question because like look at not even just with the mandalorian but like look at to the final seasons of clone wars like filoni and favreau have been doing god's work to make mandalore mandalorians like common knowledge with almost any star wars fan so i feel like there's just so much on the table to not do that right the game wasn't done but there was a lot of a foundation there and i think i saw in a recent ish like maybe four years ago interview kathleen kennedy was talking about 1313 and the star wars underworld show and she was like hey there were projects in the works and we are actively looking into those and how to retool those and stuff like that and games take a long time so maybe it pops up again the spirit of it maybe but i i bet we get a bounty hunter game I was just thinking about it, like, uh, you know, we're going to talk about Boba Fett again later on in this episode, but like, like you said, that, that whole period, that whole Rebels period, like the, the beginning of the Empire and everything, it's just such an ex- unexplored time for him. And that's when you have to assume he was at the prime of his bounty hunting career. Like, I kind of want to see, like, how, how did he get to, like, the level of, like, insane bounty hunter stature that he was in episode five and six, right? Mm-hmm. I kind of want to, I want to see that happen. Uh, what you know, whether it be through um, a TV show or through a game, I feel like a game would make more sense. Uh, but yeah, hopefully yeah. we see that. Yeah. 
anyways moving to uh speaking speaking about mandalorians and boba fett and everything like that we're gonna talk about chapter 14 the tragedy and what a tragedy it was christian Mm -hmm. uh so we're gonna talk about chapter 14 of the mandalorian and robert rodriguez the director of that episode who's also directed spy kids and uh you know machete he spoke with collider about him getting behind the camera for chapter 14 again um, and he said some pretty interesting things. I don't know if you want me to read them here, um, Christian. Yeah, go for it. Okay. So, yeah, like I said, he spoke with um, Collider. He said it was his, quote, 12-year-old dream. When I was 12, uh, when Empire Strikes Back came out, and I was a huge Boba Fett fan, you know, they'd tease him out before the movie came out. You already knew he was going to be a character to watch. The marketing was really great, like this character, Boba Fett. And so when you saw the movie, you couldn't wait to see him. He captured your imagination before the movie even came out. It's all its all we were talking about at school. I still remember that, how mysterious the character was. So that's kind of interesting, I thought. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, you, Were you going to say something? I, I think you and I are on the same page where we're both like born-again Boba Fett fans. Like, It's true. It's true. Like, Maybe it's bandwagoning, but I don't care. He's cool now. He's done things. But... Oh. The, the way Robert Rodriguez is talking about as a child, like, the marketing is what made Boba Fett exciting. And when we see him in the films, he does next to nothing. He doesn't do anything. I swear, Mike, these Boba Fett fans that have existed forever will talk their guy up so much, then look at Captain Phasma like she's not the exact same thing. Yeah, but Captain Phasma, yeah, just, like, I don't think she'll ever get the same redemption. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, like, we <laughs> won't know that until the kids that grew up with the, the sequels yeah. are in their late teens, 20s, 30s, and then totally, say, like, totally. where's my Phasma show, you know? But, like, it's the same no, thing. true. True. No, you're so right. Yeah, he says that, he says uh, later on, I'm not going to read the whole quote here, but he says, uh, that was my mission just to go satisfy that 12-year-old fascination with the character. Mm -hmm. And like, that just builds upon your point, I think. Um, Yeah, yeah, in like 20 years, we're going to see Captain Phasma fans. Anyway. (laughs) I mean, he did a great job. Like, we both shared that same sentiment last week. Like, he made Boba Fett badass. Yeah, yeah. No, it was pretty funny. I have to say, there was one part of this, this, um, uh, this this article that i really liked he said that the script was really short uh mm-hmm. quote the script was much shorter than the episode it was like 19 pages so that suggests 19 minutes i added a lot of action to this episode i even asked john favreau i said is it okay that my script is only 19 pages because i cut really fast and it's probably going to end up 16 minutes do we need to add more pages and he goes no that's what you're here for you need to fill that out I said, oh, okay, I'll try to make that battle longer. So that's where the extra battle came from. That's cool. That's pretty funny uh, mm-hmm. that he just fills all that stuff with action. Yeah. The right guy um, for the job. Right guy for the job. He did a great job, just like he said. Um, speaking about uh, Boba Fett and everything, uh, Tamora Morrison has been going on quite the media circuit uh, recently. And we talked last week about his interview with the New York Times. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a really great interview, but he also did one with StarWars.com. Uh, you know, how you do. So, uh, interesting stuff here. Um, he... One of the, one of the things that I, that I thought was interesting is that he said that he didn't know that he was going to potentially return as Boba Fett. He said no one called him for a long time and that he eventually kind of lost hope. What do you make of that question? That's kind of that's kind of sad. It's sad. Yeah. I mean, the with the way we hear about Star Wars when it comes to productions, it's very secretive, especially in the Disney era. It's been very 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 top secret about everything to the point where like yeah. I doubt for a character like Boba Fett, who seems to be supporting for this season, and we'll see where he goes, like, you probably don't need that call to be made until close to production, you know? Just to avoid secrets getting out there. Not that it mattered, because it's still leaked, but... (laughs) No, totally, totally. Yeah, Um, yeah, it's interesting, um, more into into this interview that he did with starwars.com he talks about how he had a lot of discussions with john favreau and dave filoni um regularly diving deep into the character's motivations um so kind of interesting there uh so it looks like they have it seems like they have a more longer term view for this character yeah which is exciting you know like 
I think Tamora brought something with him to Boba Fett that didn't really... It wasn't, like, obvious before. It wasn't, like, apparent, you know, his skill or his human side, in a way, um, that we can speculate later on about where the end of Mando Season 2 is going to go, but if he does return, if he is an ongoing recurring character, that makes me really happy. Totally, totally. Um, he also talked a little bit more. He he did this in his New York Times interview, but he just touched on more about his Maori background and how he sort of drew on that um, to play Boba Fett. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. All good stuff coming from Tamora Morrison, man. He's really making the the news the news circuit. <laughs> yeah, he made out pretty good when it comes to Star Wars. I feel like. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, Hopefully, hopefully we just get our own um, Boba Fett show. We'll That'd just be have super him cool. all the time. All the time. Uh, moving right along, let's talk a little bit about Star Wars Rebels, Christian. Sure. Um, so, are we going to? Uh, so, so we're going to talk about a little bit about how Taylor Gray spoke with Star Wars News Nets, the Resistance broadcast. Um, about whether or not he's going to return in any way to play um, Ezra Bridger in live action. So he's the person who voiced Ezra, Ezra Bridger. Um, and he basically said that he's oblivious to whether he's going to be playing a live action version of Ezra Bridger. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that's kind of funny. Uh, I'm sure I'm, I, I kind of looked up pictures of him. He doesn't really look like Ezra Bridger. Mm -hmm. So uh yeah, maybe I'm, an Ashley Eckstein situation. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Cause like we have examples. Well, we have one example, I think, of a character or an actor who voiced a character playing the character in live action with Katie Sackoff, yeah. and that's really the only example so far, as far as I know. Um, yeah. Like, like you said, Ahsoka was recast for live action. Um. I can't think of many others. Like, if you want to get technical about it, we're probably going to see Rex at some point in live action, and it's going to oh, probably yeah. be Tamar Morrison, not uh, D. Bradley Baker. You know, like yeah, for sure. So, for sure. But yeah, I, I, I get, I could see a recasting happen for Ezra. You know, just to get the age and appearance more accurate to where that character should be. Totally. And um, speaking of people who could play Ezra Bridger. Uh, you're familiar with the actor Ra Raul Coley, right? That's how you say his name. Yes, Raul Coley. I'm a very big fan of his uh, from The Eye Zombie. He was good in that show. So yeah, I guess um, he's been he's been he's been just teasing people on Twitter mm -hmm. um, about whether or not he'll potentially be in The Mandalorian season two. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't really understand. Do you are you, do you uh, know Lord of the Rings, Christian? Are you I do, I'm a fan. I like the movies, yes. Okay, so do you know what this means? So, let me see what the quote was. Um, yeah, it was It was like, so I, I, I guess the actor teased that he was going to be Ezra Bridger in season two, but he, did, he basically did it in a way that was very Lord of the Rings-esque. Oh, yes, okay, so I, I just saw the article you linked. Um he actually responded to this article and he was like man i'm just having fun stop it because i think in the article they're like he's teasing it to an annoying amount he's like man i'm just having a fun time like hop off <laughs> uh well so I like mean, i have my own conspiracy theories about this guy yeah he could very well still be ezra but i i do know that recently um i even did this too there were fan castings going around because at the same event that um announced all these star wars stuff they announced marvel stuff and in this marvel panel they announced a fantastic four film and online a lot of people were like hey rahu Kohli would be a dope mr fantastic so right. he commented on fan casting recently and he was like hey i really like getting involved with the fan casting stuff even if it's not realistic because people like me being involved in stories like this with budgets and attentions like this like it's not a given you know like he's a person of color who has to be very vocal you know he has to make his presence felt and um his fans have been doing that for a long time that's why where the ezra thing came from 
So. Right. Well, I just I think like honestly, just looking at photos of him, he would be a great. He he would he would really do the. I mean, he looks a lot like Ezra. Yeah, and he's a huge Star Wars fan too, so like, no brainer, you know. And we saw Rosario Dawson get fan cast essentially, so who's to say? But that'd be really cool. I mean, man, there's only there's still one episode left of The Mandalorian, so you never know. Mm-hmm. We'll see. We're gonna have to see. Uh, moving right along, uh, these are like quick hits, Christian, but they're still they're still pretty pretty meaty. Um, so again, author Justina Ireland, she is the author of the upcoming canon junior novel, A Test of Courage. Uh, are you interested in this at all, Christian? I'm not, but I'm glad it exists. Why are you glad it exists? Because it's an easy way to indoctrinate the children into the Star Wars life, man. Yeah, no, true, true, true. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I guess this, um, I, I, the, the cover art looks really cool. You could definitely tell it's like marketed towards children, though. Yeah, and I'm glad, like, I'm glad that we're still doing that. You know, like Star Wars, as much as we like it, as much as people, like boomers even like it, it's like, it's meant for kids, you know? It's meant for kids. That's when you get them to be fans, and then you get them invested for the long haul, and then they can support the deep cuts. <laughs> That's exactly right. Um, so, yeah, so we're just going to get a lot of kids who are really knowledgeable about the higher public. Um, Dude, I'm jealous. These books. <laughs> oh, I know, man. I know. Like, this did not... I mean, I guess it did when we were kids. I mean, we had the but prequels, not... but we didn't have prequel books, you know? Yeah, we did. Well, we had like the novelizations yeah, we, of the films. That's true. That's true. Not junior novels, though. Right? Yeah. Well, I, like, I guess there were junior novelizations. Like, imagine if when the prequels were coming out, we had this initiative for the old republic, and then today, we'd all just be the most knowledgeable people about the old republic. Instead, now I'd have to go research stuff. I'd have to figure out what's canon or not. You know, <laughs> like. True. True. Very true. Oh. Um, well, anyways, this uh, this interview with with StarWars.com again, very interesting. Uh, she talked. Uh, her name's Justina Ireland, and she said that um, so it seems as though some of these characters that appear in her new book, A Test of Courage, um, is are characters that she's been thinking about for a long time. It seems as though she's adapted them into the Star Wars universe. She said, quote, imagine getting a chance to create the characters you want to see and putting them in a galaxy full of space wizards and the like. One that you've spent your entire life dreaming about. Yeah, amazing is the perfect way to describe it, but it also falls so far from the actual depth of emotion involved. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, what do you make about what do you make of that, Christian? It's cool. Um, I remember when the Higher Public thing debuted, and they had that video with all the the writers they got on board, and just hearing all of them talk about the experience. Um, it it sounds very very good, very exciting. You know, it's a new era. Sure. You're getting a wide variety of writers with different backgrounds and focuses to explore something that will hopefully establish a new era that will be present until we're gone you know because like star wars itself is going to be around forever you'd assume totally totally so if we can write out this higher public thing from the beginning until we're out of here that'd be super cool <laughs> you know? i mean that's that's the plan man are you gonna read the junior canon not like the junior no. books no. no like okay they're probably what like 20 pages right like how how junior novel are we talking like a picture book or like uh no. i think I think like they're real books. I think they're going to be like 200 pages. Okay. Yeah. Like, like I think they'll be like books for like, you know, 10 year old. Like, I don't know. Like, sure. Big, big font. I, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe like, maybe I do audiobooks with those. If I'm really invested in the higher public story, maybe I just like right. cue those up when I'm like making dinner or something just to like continue the stream of content consumption. <laughs> yeah you gotta find the ways to do that yeah. for sure but yeah my focus is more on the what did they phrase it last week the adult books and then like claudia gray's <laughs> books yeah no especially especially since um yeah no it's it's all it's all interesting stuff i mean I, do you want to do you want to talk uh, about some of the embargo stuff that happened with sure these um i saw phil stostak on twitter retweeting some uh impressions because today there was an embargo that was lifted for the first wave of higher public books um, they can't talk about everything. I did see one specific Twitter thread. I will try to see what the app was real quick. Um, basically, they said that Light of the Jedi, the first book that's hitting, is very great at setting up the 
era, the tone of everything. Uh, that is Charles Soule's book. That's, again, coming first. The yeah. specific quote I liked was that uh, Soule put a cinder block on the gas and never took it off for the entire book, which is super That's great. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yes, the at is at Steve Dunk 5. Um, is a thread going through. Um, called it a shock to the senses, a test of courage. Also, apparently has a ton of heart. It's a way to tell a story about grief and loss for children. Um, and then they also got to read Into the Dark, the Claudia Gray book, which you and yeah. I learned today is dropping like February 2nd. Yep. Which is way sooner than I thought, which is... Wait, I, that, is that news? Is that new news? I, I thought it was going to be like later in the year. I thought it was going to be later in the year too. It, did we know that before? I, is that breaking news to me right now? It might be. Because Jack wow. sent us a text like a couple hours ago. And he's like, February 2nd, that's way sooner than I expected. And I was like, oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. I actually haven't read that yet, so <laughs> my bad. <laughs> um, but the way they described what they read was a phobic space horror that delivers an emotional gut punch using a diverse cast of deeply personal uh characters with themes uh, and a haunted house wow. interesting <laughs> which is like after reading master and apprentice getting her to do another stab at that type of relationship yeah. in this kind of story i can't wait for that book mike <laughs> That is pretty cool. I, I might be more excited for that now than Light of the Jedi, honestly. Yeah, I'm ready for both. Like, the past couple of weeks, I've really gotten a lot more excited. I'm ready day one to dive in on Light of the Jedi. Oh, yeah, dude. I think I sent you the um, uh, the, the signed copy. You also get, like, socks. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, so, yeah, I'm going to be hopping on that whenever, whenever possible. Me too. So, are you going to get the book with the signed one? Not the signed one, but I will get the. I think the standard one's like twenty bucks for just a hardcover. I'll, I'll do yeah. that. Yeah, that's yeah. a great. That's a great option. Um, yeah, I'm really excited for these High Republic books, man. Same. Um, it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, I guess you know one of the other things that was interesting in this in this um, interview that she had with StarWars.com uh, is that uh, Justina Ireland said that one of the primary characters, Avon Staros in her novel is connected to Santa Steros, who I guess was featured in various Marvel Star Wars titles and Dr. Aphra. Um, so that's kind of interesting. There's some connection. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, why don't we move on to uh, everybody's favorite um, sort of segment here, Mando Monday, the increasingly ever disappointing Mando Monday, in my opinion. Uh, we have some pretty interesting stuff. Christian, you were able to take a look as well. Yes. So it seems like they do two waves of updates for Mando Monday every week. Because I've been in your position before where I've gone to pull merch highlights. And around like 3 p.m. they get another refresh. Because like I'm seeing some Love Your Melon brand beanies which have okay. like a similar to the beanie Mike is wearing for video viewers. Um, oh, yes. There's a patch in the front of it with like an embroidered uh, right here. We got a Beskar Mando helmet. We got a baby Yoda. Um, there's a baby Yoda beanie with ears on it. There's a, mm. a black one of Mando holding baby Yoda. So those are neat. Um, got some like phone holders, I think. So uh, like baby Yoda holding phones. Also, Black Series Shore Troopers and Imperial right. Hover Tank Drivers. So interesting, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess there were some there were there were some more Black Series that were announced. The there's a there's a, a Tuscan Raider, which is pretty cool. Cool. Um, and there's also a Death Trooper. Death Trooper is cool. That, so yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm. I know we've talked about this a little bit, Mike, but I'm st I'm like. I'm on the precipice of diving in on Black Series, but yeah. I, I don't want to do a full collection. I just want to get the characters I really like, and I have, like, four written down. Like, I definitely want Din Djarin. I want an Obi-Wan. Uh, there's, yeah. there's, like, a really rare Obi-Wan that is him in his clone commander outfit, which is dope. Our general, I guess. Um, the, but the standard Kenobi is episode two Jesus Mullet Kenobi, which is pretty sick. <laughs> That's what um, you want. Oh, absolutely. And I was thinking about this too. It's out of stock right now because it's, I guess, pre-orders were a while ago, but Hunter from the Bad Batch. It's Black Series looks super cool. 
interesting i'm not very familiar with hunter specifically but he's the leader the rambo one oh he's the rambo one yes very cool i have a few black series i have darth revan mm-hmm. um i have jaina solo that's an interesting cool. one uh i have Sup- uh, limited edition supreme leader kylo ren Ooh. uh and then i also have yeah cal i have i have cal kestis that's yeah. the other one yeah very cool that's that's who i got i'm looking for more uh namely namely timothy oliphant's character in the boat where is it in the boba fett stuff what's his name again Cobb uh, Vanth. Cobb Vanth, yeah right right see once they once they drop the like post six boba fett like the one we just saw mm. Mm. oh i'm diving in on that one man <laughs> mm. one of my biggest regrets christian mm-hmm. just while we're on the subject um when we i think we were we were doing the podcast and everything and it was right before the mandalorian came out i think it was force friday yeah and they they had the mandalorian uh carbonite edition yeah that's yeah. like my biggest regret yeah that's that's unfortunate there was a target right down the street like a two minute drive from where we were to like oh we should have just gone <laughs> i honestly like so hard kicked myself so hard after yeah anyways two better two better things christian mm-hmm. um so anything else for mando monday that we didn't get to um there were there was a bo katan Kree's black series that's pretty cool mm-hmm. did we talk about all this uh no yeah, so there's also some Mandalorian watches. Nice. From Meister. I've never heard of Meister before, but they look nice. Mm-hmm. Um, a co- really cool Mando and the Child print. Very artsy with like dead stormtroopers all around them. Yeah. Um, I thought that was really sweet. Think like the color scheme of like neon Florida citrus. And that's, yeah. that's the art style of it. <laughs> like Vice City. Yeah. Uh, and then also a free play event in the sims for the mandalorian whatever uh are you interested in that at all chris <laughs> no uh I, I do think it's cool still that they did that like galaxy's edge thing that's like a weird in the universe expansion i never checked it out i don't really plan on it but it again i'm just glad there's more crossover things going on it's fun i guess so i mean i yeah i i take it back i take it back i was being a negative nancy <laughs> don't don't hate on me all right but the, the sims mandalorian it's not as cool as a book to increase black series let's get real um anyways why don't we move on to chapter 15 let's so this episode uh the title of this was the believer mm-hmm. i still don't really know what that means um do you have any theories um well I, i'm sure you, have you seen the meme theory no uh so i saw this on twitter from a day ago but i also know that i was listening to cantina conversations uh earlier and jackson wells said that uh i think they record on fridays so he might have been first on this joke he made a reference to the monkey song where it's like that i saw her face now i'm a believer because in this uh, episode we see tin Chart's face very funny so there very we go. funny very funny but i think it's about um mayfield yeah, but like in what context though? That's the thing that I was having a hard time sort like, of like. Like he believes in a cause again, or at least like he he believes in some morals by the end of the episode, you know, or maybe himself. True, true. I guess yeah, maybe 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 it's the morals thing. Anyway, uh, it was this this episode was directed by Rick Fama Famuia Fam. I don't even really know how to say. His I last think name. I believe it is Rick Famuiwa. Rick Famuiwa. I may have just butchered it. Uh, it was also written by him too. Very cool. Uh, he previously directed Chapter Two and Chapter Six. Uh, mm-hmm. We're all familiar with those. Chapter Two, I think, Christian, that was your fave, right? Chapter Two, no, that was the oh. Mudhorn Egg. No, 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 no. I thought you liked that one. I, I like it, but it's not my favorite, Mike. All right, all right, all right. Not the fave. Chapter Six, I know you like Chapter Six. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's mm-hmm. the heist one you like the heists it is the heist one i was less hot on it this time around i think this episode is his best one personally totally totally um yeah so anyways uh where did we where did we leave off um probably one of the most amped episodes was the last one uh so we're we're with cara dune we're with uh boba fett now we're with fennec shand and we're with the mandalorian we gotta go save grogu 
Mm-hmm. That's the that's that's the that's the premise. But, but we need who do we need? Bill Burr. Bill freaking Burr. We need Bill Burr. Uh, so interesting, sort of similar to the last episode. I was sort of expecting there to be a little bit more of like getting to Bill Burr, you know? Sure, yeah. Um, but that didn't happen. That just kind of started with him. Yeah, I honestly, at the end, I think I alluded to this last week on our episode, but the the tease that like, hey, we're getting Bill Burr back. I was like, why? Why? <laughs> he was why? Like why him <laughs> like out of yeah. anybody else from last season which i know it's slim pickings at this point but like man why bill burr like he was fine you know it was cool to see a boston guy in star wars last season totally. but i was just baffled i was like why and man he showed up he did a great job oh he showed up like big time yeah um bill burr I, have you ever seen the movie uh the king of staten island no but i hear you, uh good things about it or him uh, so yeah he's he's that he's in that movie um with pete davidson i think it was um uh gosh uh judd apatow movie mm-hmm. uh really really good movie bill burr is freaking awesome in it like really great actor mm-hmm. um and it, and it he shows he shows in this it sh- i mean it shows in this episode as well mm-hmm. so they show up to this prison camp where Miggs mayfeld that's bill burr um is sort of like a prisoner they bust him out because Cara Dune is like now some like new Republic marshal. And now she's got all these powers. If you just show up at a prison, you can break anybody out. Um, I don't know how she did that. Like, <laughs> yeah, uh, like I'll get to it later, but I have an issue with this whole thing. Okay. All right. Yeah. Get Stop. Stop me when you, when you want to get to that okay. anyways. Uh, so they get back to the slave one and mix mayfeld's like what's going on he sees he sees mando there's a really funny joke there uh oh and... hold on i would like to say yeah. the sure. paint job on boba fett's armor made me feel yeah. things mike it was nice it was nice like i i love anything matte like if you do a nice paint job on something and it's matte i love how that looks more than almost anything seeing boba fett show up with like a nice clean mac green armor set with like the yeah. robes like tightened up and everything oh i want that black series i want that black series honestly man people were saying that people were like oh why did he do that so soon and people were like oh he wanted he didn't want like the battle scars of like somebody else on his armor and i was like that's so cool man yeah. <laughs> uh anyways so yeah he shows up they they're like oh we're missing we're missing the kid and Miggs Mayfeld's like, oh no, that's that that can't be. We gotta save him, right? Uh, so he's like, there's an Imperial mining hub on Morak. So they get into, they go to Morak, but first, the freaking slave one when it when it like the way that it gyrates and stuff when they're mm-hmm. sitting there, so cool, man. Yeah. So, cool. and I saw a lot of people being like, oh, so that's how it works. I always thought it was like just he has to get in against gravity and like sit against gravity and does he not do that in attack of the clones or is it just the way it's shot maybe i think it's just the way it's shot i think it's just i don't think people really know like how it's laid out yeah because like i i saw people make a huge deal about it and i was like oh i i mean yeah it's cool (laughs) i never like considered that you know for sure i mean it was just i thought it was really cool oh no definitely all that happened seeing um, it work I, th- I saw also because phil sostak does a bunch of tweets about like production design yeah and um i think he tweeted out something about how the team worked on making like a rig or something like that but it was cool yeah that's pretty cool um so anyway they go to morak where the imperials are i guess are refining radonium uh they figure out this plan that didn't really honestly make sense i i didn't i couldn't follow it at least personally um to sort of like get into the base to mm-hmm. get coordinates to where Moff Gideon is, right? That's essentially what they were doing. Um, and they hijack a juggernaut, which is basically this this big tank that brings Rhydonium from the mines to the Imperial mining facility. Mm-hmm. Um, and on the way, they get uh, they have to dress up in in the Imperial garb, which I think is cool. They always do that. Mm-hmm. I did like too when they were figuring out who should go, and they were like, "Well, I can't because I work for the Republic." And it's like, "Oh, right." 
I can't. I'm dead. And Bo is like, don't recognize me. Like, I- I've worked with these dudes before. They're not going to be happy about that. Like, I liked that a lot. And it kind of teased where we were going, you know, with Mando trying to, yeah. having to sacrifice some things. Well, I think um, Boba Fett, he was like, I- they might recognize my face, which is really funny mm-hmm. because <laughs> he is the he is the template for everybody. Yeah. All the clones. Uh, so they-, they hijack a juggernaut, which is like the big tank, like I said, and they get sort of ambushed by pirates who are looking to sort of blow up their juggernaut for unknown reasons. So I, I think it is the pirates were acting in favor I of guess. the village. That's what I'm, that's what I took it as too. They were like, uh, sort of like protecting their homeland. Yeah. Like eco terror, like you're ruining our environment. We're trying to stop you by any means. Exactly. You know? Exactly. No. Yeah. Very cool stuff. Yeah. Also, um, I, I, I really liked the, um, the conversations that like, mayfeld was having with mando like on the drive i I liked their back and forth in this episode a lot considering his his first episode was really just like he was teasing him you know like mayfeld and season one was very flat but this episode he kind of stole a lot of the show and rightfully gave him a lot of depth which i didn't expect so that's why it really hit for me i think absolutely i think um more in the beginning of the show it was just uh it was more one way. You're like, it's a good back and forth. <laughs> like, yeah, more like a one way conversation. Sure, yeah. Bilber, sort of talking at the Mandalorian. But yeah, no, I agree with you. Um, just having that opportunity for him to just talk is mm-hmm. good for a character. Yeah, ex Imperial, uh, too. That's interesting compared to like where we saw Kara in season one of like, I was an ex Republic, Rebellion, whatever. Shock Trooper, I think. Yeah. yeah, no, it's very interesting. They're sort of the opposites of one another. Yeah um so yeah i'm kind of curious like what his job was in the the empire yeah did he say i don't think so well we get into it a little bit uh later in the episode when we're talking to like the um the imperial officer very true so uh they survive the the pirate attack uh the the empire helps them out it's like the only time that i ever cheered for the empire (laughs) uh so that was cool they get into the uh, base. They snuck in, and Din Djarin has to like stick a little data pad. But they gotta scan their face. Makes Mayfeld can't go into the cafeteria because his like former superior is in there. So Din Djarin's gotta go in there and take his helmet off for Baby Yoda. Mm-hmm. Beautiful moment. Yeah, uh, it, it got me like emotional because I was yeah. like, man. I mean, I kind of, like we all saw it coming, right? Like since the the beginning of the episode when he like took his armor off, and we we didn't see it, but like since the yeah. start of it, we I knew that it was gonna be coming to an unmasking point. The second they were like, "We gotta scan a face," they recognize Boba Fett. Like it's like okay, yeah. we know where this is going. Um, but between this and sort of the final scene of the episode, like it's really progressing Din as a character and more of like as a father, and we're progressing that a lot more than i expected this season and i sure. it hit me it worked i have to say like uh pedro pascal gets gets like zero on screen like his face acting time mm-hmm. but the moment he takes off his helmet it's like so real yeah so convincing like he he seems very uncertain you mm-hmm. know like very vulnerable very, very vulnerable it's very cool how he acted that um mm-hmm. Anyway, he gets what he needs. He gets the coordinates and everything, and they get confronted by Miggs Mayfield's former superior. Uh, and so Pedro Pascal, Din Djarin can't put his helmet on. And we get a very long... Uh, Miggs Mayfeld comes and basically saves Din Djarin, and they have a very long conversation at the table. I love with, this scene. Yes. So cool. So tense. Mm-hmm. They, they sit down for a drink with Miggs Mayfeld's um, old Imperial supervisor, uh, Din Djarin does not have a slum. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> I really like this scene because it's sort of giving, again, it's giving depth, but I, I feel like it's giving depth in a way we never really got out of the originals when it comes to the politics. You know, like, I don't think Rogue One does much of this, but like the prequels, it's all about feed and palpatine the hubris of the jedi the republic falling like it's been coming forever but this is sort of like retroactively doing that timeline wise to the empire where it's like you're just seeing the devotion of these maniacs and oh yeah 
I guess in a way is also lending to where we get with the first order, but more specifically like the final order. Um, yeah, I really liked it a lot. It was cool. I haven't played the campaign yet, but it was cool hearing them talk about Operation Cinder because I know that's from Battlefront 2. Yeah. Right. Um, and Mayfeld alludes to the fact that his job for the Empire was like a ground troop, basically, because he's like, oh, my entire battalion was lost. Like there was like thousands of us that were there and died because of your command and stuff like that. But uh, which makes me want to play the campaign of Battlefront 2 now because like I'm curious yeah. about Operation Cinder. But yeah, Operation Cinder is pretty interesting, man. Um, I, that's why I think you'd like the, the campaign of Battlefront 2. It does a lot to like sort of flesh out this post-Return of the Jedi universe. Mm -hmm. um, and it was cool to see that sort of coming through the Mandalorian here. When they dropped Operation Cinder, I was like, oh, that's interesting. That makes Mayfeld was like also uh, you know Imperial in that capacity. Mm -hmm. um, he, was, he was Imperial after the fact. Um, uh, so... So yeah, I mean, like Operation Cinder was pretty deadly and everything, and we get to see that sort of come to fruition uh, here for Migs Mayfeld. At least he sort of snaps, um, and he shoots his superior officer in the chest with a blaster pistol, killing him. Great uh, acting too, like the way he was like welling up with tears and stuff. Like Bill Burr, man, he did a really good job. <laughs> like, like you could t like it looked like he was gonna explode. Yeah like it was wonderful acting it was really great um so yeah they basically he basically does that and din Djarin looks at him like dude <laughs> yeah i love the facial like, expression because like like you said like we rarely ever get to see Pedro pascal act on screen but like you could tell in that moment he like he did everything he could that was really funny yeah he's like come on man um and they basically have to shoot their way out uh Migs Mayfeld basically gives Din Djarin back his helmet and says that he won't say anything. He never saw it. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a moment of hesitation. Did you notice that? Yeah. In Din Djarin, mm -hmm. he, he like almost didn't put the helmet back on. Yeah. But he did. And they uh, fought their way out. Um, and basically just, uh, yeah, I'll, escaped. I'll, I want to add this one thing too. When we got yeah. to the bridge point, uh, this was a while back in the episode, but the them driving yeah. over the bridge... I yes. was like, super cool because we got to see the short troopers again because we've only seen them in Rogue One. Right, right, right. And that was really cool. No, but very true. Please continue. Yeah, I just want to say that, yeah, we, we basically leave. Uh, they get extracted. And um, as they're flying away on Slave One, which was what Boba Fett was there for, uh, Migs Mayfeld and Din Djarin, that is, uh, Migs Mayfeld basically blows up part of the mining facility by shooting... A juggernaut filled with Rhydonian. Awesome aim, by the way. Yeah. Uh, so then two TIE fighters come to sort of get Slave One, and J uh, Boba Fett does what his father did previous, and he releases one of the wonderful seismic charges to destroy those two TIE fighters. Amazing moment. Mike, He when he says we got company, I'm like, okay, yeah. cool. We're going to do it on a, like a nice dogfight. Slave One's going to show off the second the frame that they cut to the flaps before they even opened i knew what was coming like and i was freaking out i was yes! like screaming at my tv <laughs> no you were you were thinking to yourself you're like oh cool like we're gonna get like the slave one it's gonna be like so cool like mm -hmm. like shooting and everything and yeah. like a dog fight but nah it got to show up in a better way oh absolutely and it, oh, seismic charges it, it was so so cool and that is an example because listen we all know I love The Last Jedi. We know I like it when Star Wars doesn't lean into like satisfying fans. Um, I feel like that, in terms of fan service, that's earned. Because, you know, it's like, it's nothing that feels cheap. Like, it's a, it's a fun thing to do, you know? It's like, there's a very small portion of Star Wars fans that love the seismic charge. So. Yeah, I mean, like, it... It, like it's not like it doesn't make sense like yeah. it, it, totally, it totally makes sense like right 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 to me to me like watching that in the moment it's like yeah it's realistic that the slave one would have a seismic charge you know like yeah exactly it's not like like boba fett showing up and it's like isn't he cool guys it's like no he did something you know like totally if you're gonna do a fan service callback reference thing it's this type of thing that's fun you know because i know some people like not to compare to sequels but like um when uh, Han is looking at Ben Solo and he's like, I know. It's like like that kind of fan service. That's a difference, you know? Yeah, for sure. This was just hype. 
<laughs> this was just real pure injected straight into my veins hype mm -hmm. uh so yeah we're getting to the end here um basically Din Djarin and Cara Dune let Mayfeld walk uh they they say that he died in the mine in the mining incident this is my really problem sad. this is my problem because at the beginning of our discussion you bring up how it's like okay so for some reason Cara Dune can just be like oh I want this prisoner to come with me right and then she's like oh yeah we're on the record he died in that mining incident why the hell is your report gonna be like oh yeah so i brought this prisoner yeah <laughs> to this imperial base for Did some reason that i can't talk about and then he blew up the factory and he blew up himself <laughs> on my watch like i get it i get it and i'm glad mayfield got to walk free but like what the hell you know what like dem <laughs> if this is how we write cardoon off if we just demote her for this cool yeah <laughs> get her out of there no she goes to jail no. that's that's how it all ends it was, it was funny too because like when she was saying that line in my head the whole time i was like laughing because i was like this is how they're gonna write you off between seasons shame yeah, she yeah. died in that mining explosion on Braca or something like, <laughs> 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 yeah no it was very it's very strange thank you for pointing that out Christian. yeah I that, I point, I was like thinking about this like when I watched it for the first time I was like how did she just walk into this prison and just bust this guy out? But yeah. anyway, um, so yeah, uh, we have we have the final shot uh, with Moff Gideon on his on his capital ship receiving a transmission from um, from Din Djarin, repeating what Gideon said to Din Djarin. Mm -hmm. During the skirmish at Navarro, I think it was the end of season one. He mm -hmm. says, "Like you know, you have something I want. Mm -hmm. You may think you have some idea of what you're in possession of, but you do not. Soon he will be back with me. He means more to me than you will ever know." Touching. Pretty, pretty good. Yeah, pretty good stuff. So that's the end of the episode. I think it was great. Yeah, I was a really big fan. It's. I think like. I don't know. I see a lot of people this season every week basically saying, like, oh, best episode so far. And, like, I haven't agreed with that every week. Um, I think in terms of, like, a fleshing out the world and the characters and, like, just servicing the overall world, I really think this was one of the stronger episodes because it... I don't think we've had, like, a ground-level psychological look i guess at the empire remnants or their logic it's like yeah gideon's operating you know but like we never really got a look behind that outside of like the bad guys are still here totally so i really liked it on that front again seeing mayfeld talk about empire post uh six i really liked i liked him and Din Djarin working together i think this was a big episode for Din Djarin's character growth so like I really liked it a lot, and it is one of my favorites of the season. Um, there are other episodes that I think have been fun that got a lot of hype this season that, like, yeah, they're fun, but I don't think they're best episode of the show, like I saw a lot of people say. And I don't think this is either, but I think it's one of the best of the season. For sure. I think the point that you make about how this sort of, like, contextualizes, like, why the Empire is doing what they're doing mm -hmm. after they've been defeated. Right. Um, and it kind of gives a bit more of like a human perspective to that, like you said. I think that's a really important point because in Star Wars, a lot of the times we don't get that. <laughs> yeah. Like we don't we don't get like what the what the evil, the bad guys, like why they're doing what they're doing. Yeah, and it's um, not even like humanizing in a way that like makes us sympathize with them or anything. It's like that's it, not what I. Mean. No, I know that's not what you mean. I just mean like it makes it scarier. You know, it's like these people are insane. Like actually. Yeah, so I, on that front, at least, I really liked the episode a lot. Um, I will see how it stacks up in the coming weeks, but I have, I guess, two questions for you. Yeah. Um, one, do you think Mayfeld comes back again, like, next season or something, or ever? Like, I, I kind of thought he'd stick around for the rest of the season, I think he may come back again sometime in a, in another season. Mm -hmm. I, th I think this season, maybe not. Uh, probably not. Okay. Um, another question. Um, in terms of going into next week's episode, the finale, do you think this was a good penultimate episode? Because I 
liked it. Like I know last season we had like basically the the two episodes that were for the finale, but this was more of a a one off kind of. Yeah, it's it seems as though like the finale, you know, this next episode is going to be really the finale. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I think it was a good penultimate episode. I think it it set a, it, it sort of teed it up pretty good. Sure. Um, and it makes sense. Uh, it seems as though next episode they're just going to go try to save Grogu. Yeah. Um, I, and final guesses. Do you think we still get the cliffhanger Jedi reveal? I do. I think. Yeah. It's, I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna. I'm just gonna say we're gonna. And it's gonna be Raul. That'd be super cool, man. I'd be a big Listen, big fan of that. I got nothing. I got nothing riding on this. I'm just gonna go with it. If I if I'm wrong, what happens? I'm just wrong. That's it. I I'm still I'm still thinking Luke. I still think Luke is the one that makes sense. And we'll get we'll get into this a little more. But like the way they're planning on fleshing out post six i feel like luke has to show up at some point with all the things we're doing yeah um and i'll also bonus question do you think this season has a happy ending um because i don't know if i do i don't know if i do either i'm gonna say honestly i hope not like okay. in a way right like i feel like that would just be more interesting like like part of me is a little worried because like i i know you probably can't do this well maybe you can oh my god so what like we didn't see grogu this episode when we cut back to the base there's no comment on him there was just his reaction him watching the tape is grogu dead and like he's already dead and then din shows up there and he's like oh man and then it's just like a hellscape out of there and then season three is about getting revenge is that what it is? Yes. Season three is like John Wick. Yeah. Is that what it is? <laughs> that would be kind of cool, I have to say. Because <sighs> the thing is, there's a world where this show, The Mandalorian, builds up Grogu, and then like forever ago from or forever from now, we can pick up and be like, "Oh, this is Grogu fully matured in a new trilogy." But like, what if he died? What if he's just dead? I mean, like he should be right like he doesn't show up at all like otherwise yeah and they don't need to but like you'd figure if like the only thing i think could happen there is if something goes wrong with the the empire's experiments because that doctor was protective of grogu and he's still involved Mm -hmm. so like Mm -hmm. considering that they still needed grogu's blood even after that initial time they probably realized like oh we should keep him alive so we can just keep like taking his blood letting him make more blood keep taking it you know do you th- do you think disney would be ballsy enough to kill off grogu though i mean maybe you know because like think uh, of all the lost merchandising though you could still do that true you can you know like i'm sure there's another star wars character that died that like like i, I doubt we get well they did ewoks forever they were in one movie you know <laughs> like true this is true um but yeah, I could see a world, man, where we show up and he's gone, and then, <laughs> like, I'm just thinking, like, the Mandalorian like opens up like one of those like hydraulic doors, and like Grogu's dead. What does he do? Like, like what happens then? I think he, the sh- he takes the helmet off and he goes on a killing spree. Oh, you think he takes the helmet off? Yeah, he's like, I want you to know who is ending this second empire or something. Like, I, I. I and the whole third world. season is directed by Robert Rodriguez. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I do think there's a world, right? Like, I know, I've yeah. seen people throwing out there, like, maybe Boba Fett dies and he gets to Slave 1 as a new ship. Like, I don't know. I feel like we're too comfortable. I think we're too comfortable resting on the idea that, like, oh, the big thing at the end of the season is a Jedi. Like, I think there might be something else and it might be bad. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know, man. Like, that's kind of interesting. In a way, like, that would be kind of, that would be cool. Yeah. Um though it would be sad to see grogu die i mean it would make a lot of sense though because like they've really like they've really built grogu up in yeah. this this uh-huh. past season at least in a way like they're they're making um they're making us sort of like become attached to grogu just as din Djarin would so it's like i'm not gonna need to add fodder to your own um to your own idea here but yeah they could they could be setting us up to just break us yeah man i don't know because the thing is giddy uh giancarlo esposito is saying like oh you'll see a lot more of me in season three 
there's plans for four seasons, like, there's going to have to be an ending with Grogu at some point. Like, he's either going to have to stick around forever and we just end the show, or he's going to move on to the temple. Like, there's going to be an ending, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, what better way to do a season three than just cut the gimmick and be like, ah, revenge time. And then season four is just like getting back Mandalore. I don't know, man. I have no idea. I'm, it's I'm going that. off at this point. But. Yeah, it's either that or uh, who, knows how, who, know how, who knows how Grogu's end, Grogu meets his fate. It's either that or maybe Kylo Ren kills him. Who knows? Yeah. I hope he doesn't uh, die. I hope we get Grogu like 800 years from now. I, I hope he doesn't die either. But it's possible I'm and worried. it would make for damn good television yeah. so why don't we move on to like the real meat and potatoes of this episode here i think we must be like an hour in now yeah. um but but yeah we got a lot more to talk about here and it's all good stuff uh yeah. unless you have anything else to say about the mandalorian um, no, there's some th- things that I want to bring up about The Mandalorian that we will inevitably talk about um, going through these shows. Okay. I'll say this, though, just since Sounds we're good. leaving off on Mandalorian, um, it was confirmed that season three will begin over a year from when this season ends, because uh, Christmas is when we get the beginning of season three of Mando. Yeah, that's fine with me. If they need more time, they need more time. Uh, keep making good stuff. Yeah, I agree. So, <laughs> anyways, so uh, Christian and I, we have the same sort of thing pulled up here, and we're just gonna go through uh, screenrant.com, put together this this sort of like too long didn't read of 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 all the stuff, all the new Star Wars stuff that was announced um, during Disney Investor Day. Mm-hmm. I think it was last Wednesday, right? Some last Thursday. That? last thursday uh yeah so you know mickey mouse gave us some some new treats here and um why don't we start off with the first thing that's on this list and that's the major motion picture from wonder woman director patty jenkins star wars rogue squadron so um i guess there are no confirmed story details of this uh but obviously previously uh there was a rogue squadron video game and whatnot uh the group was established band of x-wing pilots founded by luke skywalker after the battle of yavin also featured wedge um yeah so, it's pretty cool yeah it's apparently this is going to release december 25th 2023 as yes. of right now. so this is the next movie this is the next star wars movie taika's is after this um yeah. whatever the 2022 one was got pushed i believe um or they got three plus years yeah um so i what i really liked about this i like patty jenkins i liked wonder woman i'm excited for 84 um i don't know if you saw this but she tweeted out like a, a video thing of like her at a airbase and she was talking about how her dad was a fighter pilot and she used to like hear the fighter pilots go all the time and she's like oh he gave his life for the country and ever since then i've just been dead set on wanting to make like the best fighter pilot dogfighting movie that's ever been made and she got that opportunity because she said the story was never there but she finally got the opportunity when they approached her from star wars and were like hey would you be interested and everything about this i am stoked for i think it's the great like a great choice for the next movie to do um you know i'm not huge on rogue one i feel like this could be what a lot of people think rogue one is personally (laughs) like yeah just like a really solid Star Wars movie. That's just a good time, man. Like X Wing fighters are cool. Oh, totally. I, I have a. I'm interested in what you think about this. Do you think it's going to be uh, set during uh, the like Empire, or do you think it's going to be during the New Republic? That's a good question. Um, because, like you mentioned, we don't have story or timeline details. Um, I know. To my knowledge, this might not be canon anymore, but I thought Rogue Squadron existed before Luke, and then Luke replaced a fighter from Rogue Squadron. I don't remember. You're thinking about Red Red Squadron. Oh, thank you, thank you. Red 5 died, and he took Red 5. Gotcha, okay, thanks. Um, Yeah, so Rogue Squadron's interesting, then, because I I could see a world, you know, where it's post-6, which would be really fun. Um, I could see a world even where it's post-9, and it's just yeah uh the new rogue squadron protecting 
the restructuring and rebuilding of the galaxy. Um, regardless, after seeing some of the X-Wing fights in the most recent films, like specifically, I think, in Last Jedi and in Rogue One, I'm really in for this, man. It sounds super fun. It sounds like a great like summer movie. And I know it's... <laughs> Except it's, it's releasing yeah. in December. Yeah. It's releasing in December, which is like the norm for Star Wars now, but... You know what I mean? It, like, me, it, just, it just feels right. It feels cool. Totally. I mean, the fact that it's releasing in December makes me wonder, do you think it's going to have just like a bit more depth than your normal like summer blockbuster? Or do you think it's going to be sort of in the same vein as that? I think it'll be the same vein. Because like Aquaman yeah, dropped in December, you know, like we get like there's usually room for one major summer blockbuster in the December months. And it's just a yeah. matter of like which studio can claim it. Because I think like Warner Brothers tried to lock that down with The Hobbit for a while. Um, they tried with Aquaman. Um, I think Universal tried with Transformers. Like clearly, ever since the Force Awakens, I think Disney and Star Wars have owned December. So I think that's just continuing that trend because I think we might be getting one of the Avatar sequels before this in December twenty two. I just think Disney likes to lock down the winter blockbuster. You know, I think they like that. Yeah, they do like that. Anyways, this is very interesting, and I'm very excited to see this. Uh, like you said, I'm, I think it's a good choice for the next movie, mm -hmm. feature film, yeah. theatrical release. If it is post six, Alphabet Squadron cameo. Don't don't pull squadrons. Do something. I I want it to be post six personally. Yeah. I think it'd be cooler, um, and I think it's probably the, what they're gonna do, just because they've made that era <laughs> essentially. Yeah, and by that time it'll be much more fleshed out. Yeah, exactly, and it will continue to flesh that era out. You know, like this is the new Clone Wars era. You know, it's like bridging the gap and f explaining everything that wasn't explained. So exactly. No, yeah, I'm I'm excited for this. Me too. Uh, okay, moving on. Ahsoka. That's the next one. Um, so this is going to be a TV show centered around the titular character Ahsoka Tano. Um, and Rosario Dawson will once again play the role. Uh, she she did it in, uh, what was it, chapter 14 or something like that? Um, it was the fifth episode, I believe, of season two. Uh, so John Favreau is developing the project alongside Dave Filoni. So that's good news. And mm -hmm. there's been no release date of this yet. But uh, the title card has been released and it looks really cool. Yeah, I think, um, first off, this is cool. This is a... a thing we saw coming um like you said no date but it makes sense after seeing ahsoka this season seeing how well she was handled um i i think the more interesting thing here despite the ahsoka hype is the fact that this rangers of the new republic are going to be like telling a concurrent story with future right. seasons of the mandalorian which tells yes. me that this is in the same timeline i don't know if this is going to interfere with like the rebels sequel that people were talking about but i think this taking place and telling the same story that mando and rangers are going to be telling kind of locks it into where it's going to be taking place you know totally yeah i guess at this point we might as well just talk about rangers of the new republic too yeah i think they go uh, hand in hand you know they're both the live action they, shows so they do this is also coming from john favreau and dave filoni um but yeah i i did read something that they're all supposed to culminate into one did you did you read something like that too i did and mike you know i speculated this like three weeks ago that i know you did speculate this and, and correct me if i'm wrong it was rangers of the new republic ahsoka and the mandalorian are all supposed to come together right yeah so i do th i genuinely i think we're building towards a second siege of mandalore in live action and we take back <laughs> mandalore and that's the end of all the shows i mean it's very possible man that would be really cool like what other thing would you build towards right like you have a jedi with ahsoka she has familiarity with Mandalore. You got Bo-Katan. Rangers could just be like the New Republic backing up the forces. And then Mando and Mando, he does his Mando thing. He shows up and he fights for his people, you know? <laughs> totally. I mean, I, I just don't... Yeah, it, it should be cool. I'm excited. It seems like they got they got an idea. And the fact that Ahsoka showed up in the this previous season of The Mandalorian definitely definitely shows that they've got some sort of direction with it all <laughs> mm -hmm. i i would love to see um who I, like i have more questions about rangers because like i really don't hope 
I really hope that's not like the Cara Dune show. I don't think it will be at this point. I think. I think I think I uh, yeah. Who's the actress? That Gina, Gina Carano. Carano. Yeah, Gina Carano. I don't think she's not too hot right now. Yeah, the way she's been wilding and saying whatever she wants on social yeah. media makes me think that her contract's over already. It's like 2021, Gina Carano. Like, yeah. let's let's get it together. So, but I wonder, like, who is gonna be in Rangers? Do you think is it like? Is it well, familiar I, characters? Well, I mean, I I thought this, and, and and I know a lot of people have said this. You know, I'm not the only one to have thought this. The guy in uh, uh, the Mandalorian, that one, you know how he was being tracked by those two New Republic pilots, and yes. one of them was Dave Filoni, the other one was Paul Sun Young Lee, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, he's he did Kim's Convenience, or he's in Kim, Kim's Convenience. I've never seen it. Um, people are saying that maybe he could be. Um, you know, one of the characters in this. Yeah, it would be cool if they got like uh, Mayfield. You know, like I, I doubt he'd want to pledge allegiance to another faction at this point after his arc, but that'd be cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. He's already gone through the Imperial thing, so I'm not yeah. sure if he's going to be super into anything else. Exactly, but way more hype for the Ahsoka <laughs> show. I'm glad it's happening. Ahsoka is one of my favorite Star Wars characters. Like that's just a super cool announcement. I'm, I'm I can't wait for that. I'm excited for all of these, man, just because the fact that, that they said that they're all going to come together is very interesting. And, and uh, Christian, score one in your scorecard, because that's that's some pretty good predicting right there. Well, I hope I'm wrong about that Grogu one, man. <laughs> you know what you also got right, Christian? <laughs> what? What I got right? Uh, the, the fact that you were adamant, I think pre in previous episodes, I think it may have been even the last one, that the High Republic was going to be more than just like books. Uh, and goddamn, Christian, you were right. Because during Investor Day, we got the announcement of a new TV show, called the acolyte and this is supposed to be some sort of uh uh it's supposed to explore a new timeline so at the end of the high republic some 200 years before the events of star wars episode one um it's described as a mystery thriller that will take viewers into a galaxy of shadowy secrets and emerging dark side powers in the final days of the high republic era and it's being uh, uh created by russian doll creator leslie headland um cool so what we knew about this before last week or before the investor day was that leslie headland was doing a female led show that's all we knew so now we know the female led show takes place at the end of the higher public it's called the acolyte um there's a handful of female jedi they've been uh putting forefront um in the higher public content so potentially it's one of them but the dark side powers at the end of the higher public mike are we gonna flesh out like what like i don't know if the end of the high republic is the beginning of phantom menace because they haven't like fully cleared that i don't know if it's like a 50 year gap in between that timeline i don't know i really don't but um oh man because like that logo that's a sith logo man like (laughs) it is a sith logo you know i have a theory about this okay um, I think that this show, it's its very likely that this show is going to, uh, in my opinion, follow the one, the only Darth Plagueis, perhaps? Okay. Uh, hear me out. I think that, like, in the Expanded Universe, he was supposed to, like, have lived longer or something. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's possible that we may so- sort of see that. Um, or maybe whoever his master was. Was his master darth bane like how recent is that gap because i know darth bane was like the end of the old republic because he created the rule of two and the sith army ended at the end of the old republic so i don't like and i know that's like maybe not canon fully anymore but like darth bane i think is still recognized as the rule of two creator because of clone wars yeah i believe probably I i think that we're talking 200 years before episode one i think the sith have been long gone for a while well there's still one at least right like there's well, still one yeah. or two, well, two probably but yeah i i think you're right to think that maybe th- this dark side power we're going to explore as a familiar character uh, plagueis would be super cool i think darth bane is a potential because i think wasn't there rumors i think we talked about this in like january on an episode that like there was a darth bane show rumor 
Maybe. I, I'm not to my knowledge. I mean, it's possible. I I have no idea. I, I, I think Darth Bane, if he, if he is, I'm not super familiar with the history. If he is the one who created the world too, he would be a bit too old, I think. Well, but I'll do some digging. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You might be right. I think, I think though, we can both agree that we may see some sort of familiar character here. For sure. Um, do we and, see a young Sheev? A young Sheev, perhaps. I, I don't think. I don't think so. Um, <laughs> I, you, how old do you think Sheev Palpatine was in Episode Three before he got all messed up? I don't know, man. When did he kill Plagueis? episode one right wasn't Plagueis around technically during episode one I don't know what's canon anymore Mike I don't know what's canon either Christian's all just melding in my head uh, but yeah it's supposed to be really cool uh, or it sounds really cool actually mm -hmm. um, yeah mystery thriller That it's it it's an excellent pitch everything about this pitch is like right up my alley so yes I'm excited yeah totally and if it's supposed to be female led that's that's pretty neat too mm -hmm. So why don't we talk about the next show here on this list, uh, Lando? That's the name of the show. Yeah. Uh, the yeah, we're getting um, we're getting a show based on Lando Calrissian. I think that's basically all we have, other than the fact that it's being developed by Justin Simeon, who is the creator of Dear White People. Have you seen that show, Chris? I haven't, but I heard good things. I think it's a Netflix original, I believe. Yes, I have seen that show. It's great. Mm -hmm. It's very good. Uh, so yeah, I guess it's in the early stages here, um, and I'm not sure if it's been confirmed whether Donald Glover is going to be returning, since he did play Lando Calrissian in Solo. Um, I assume so, mm -hmm. though, because he did a great job. Yeah, the fact that they didn't say that has me a little curious, but they didn't really announce casting for a lot of the shows, except for Rosario Dawson and one we'll get to, but like... Yeah. Um... Yeah, I get, honestly, I could see it go either way. I could see him come back. I could see him pass on it. Considering he's a big Star Wars fan, getting another shot to make the role more his own might be something he'd want to do. Um, I have seen people speculating, though, that... And we can talk a little more about this after we run through all of the announcements, but maybe this puts a nail in the coffin for an official solo, too, if we're getting a Lando spinoff around the same era, but... Yeah, if we're getting a Lando spinoff around the same area, you got to think that maybe Alden Ehrenreich is going to reappear, right? Yeah, because mm -hmm. I, I think the the thing was like, if there was a rumored show that's been rumored recently and it wasn't here, um, maybe some wires got crossed and we heard different things. But like, if there was a Solo 2 coming, if we got a 2023 movie and Taika's movie talked about, like, they probably would have said it here, you know, <laughs> like... I'm sure. So, yeah. So right. the way you and I have talked about Lando on the show, that like maybe this is what we get out of it, maybe. Yeah. So it's possible that this next Lando show is going to be just our is going to be so low too, which I think it could be better. Maybe I don't know. Uh, uh, depends on how they do this. Um, I've seen some people talk about like how they can incorporate maybe Billy D. Williams. Um, people have been saying like imagine billy d williams as like old lando calrissian sitting around a sabak table like telling people about you know oh, I'd love that. his his past and it's flashing back to donald glover and it plays it out I, that would be very very cool i'd love that that would be so cool and he's like the narrator or something like that mm -hmm. um i've seen people talk about that 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 is something i want to see yeah that'd be sweet that would be really cool uh, moving on to the next uh, thing here, we got the confirmed title, I think, right? Yeah. Of of the next of, of one of the upcoming TV shows here, Obi Wan Kenobi. Ooh, baby! Yes. Uh, so we they they had already confirmed that this is happening, but they just confirmed some more details. Um, obviously, Ewan McGregor is coming back to reprise his role as Obi Wan Kenobi, set after Episode Three. 10 um, years after specifically yes uh set 10 years after episode three um and we have revealed that disney revealed that obi-wan kenobi will begin filming in march 2021 so maybe 2022 we'll see it yeah because there was that report recently that they were starting in january i would i would think maybe that they might be doing like principal photography in january potentially some location shooting if we are doing on location for the show uh -huh. um but yeah man 
Exciting times. And, yep, it's going to be a six episode limited series. Uh, it will chronicle some of Obi Wan's time in exile on Tatooine, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, Deborah Chow will be directing it, and Hossein Amini. I don't really. I'm not familiar with him. It will be writing it. Um, but one of the biggest things that came out of this uh, Disney Investors Day is that Hayden Christensen will be returning as Darth Vader for what Kathleen Kennedy said will be, quote, the rematch of the century. So that's the big news. That's the big news. Like, I holy know. shit. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, like, I... Listen... When they cast Hayden, because I was in the middle of doing something else on Joy Clicks, I was working with Kevin and Jack on something. Yeah. So I was like scrolling through announcements. I was like, oh, sweet, Hayden's back. That's like the last thing I saw. Like a day later, I saw the quote that Kathleen had about the rematch of the century. They're going to yep. fight? You're telling me they're going to fight? fight. You're, you're telling me in the year 2022 we're gonna see them fight and we're gonna hear a new version of the battle of heroes yes because you know they're gonna bring that back they love reason themes they're gonna bring it back oh. they're gonna make it sadder oh my oh my god you, here's the thing though do we want to see this at this like, do we yeah do we want to do we want to see obi-wan kenobi versus darth vader like i thought that there was some sort of magic in the fact that like the last time that like Alec Guinness saw him was like when he killed him burn burning up on Mustafar, you know. Yes, I think the way here's the wiggle room I'll give them the way in four, Alec the way in the originals he talks about like oh from a certain point of view I didn't tell I didn't lie to you like yeah I I think checking the pulse on Vader halfway through his exile might give him more of a reason to really view them as different people you know because like he saw anakin like he was calling him anakin in that fight right like on mustafar he was trying to reach him he's like anakin anakin my brother love you yeah anakin so like like you could argue that maybe he just came to accept it and then by the time he sees him in four he addresses him as vader but like i think having a check-in 10 years in like right in the middle because it's a 19 year gap from three to four right i think you could like have a world where if you make it make sense story-wise and emotionally for them to meet up and fight again you can really just emphasize the way like emphasize alec guinness's performance and like work backwards from that and really like bolster it in the way that clone wars did for the prequels i think i think you can really make it work yes it's questionable but I, do, I have faith. I really do believe that they can make it work. Yeah, there are a lot of questions here. I mean, do you think that Hayden Christensen is going to be Darth Vader proper, like in the suit? Or do you think he's going to show up as Darth Vader? Like, I don't know. Like, we, I know that Hayden Christensen was in the suit during mm-hmm. episode three and everything. But, like, are we going to have him fight in that thing? Like, I what's hope, the deal? Dude. I hope so. Like, yeah. I what ideally i think because there were rumors that there'd be flashbacks so i think ideally we do get a couple like at least one really solid clone wars flashback that it is like, yeah hayden and ewan in their like general skywalker general kenobi outfits maybe rosario dawson shows up for a minute like one of those at least and then i do think the rest of it would be hayden in the suit and i think similar to the rebels fight i could see a world where like the mask cracks a bit in their fight and then it's more like the exposed uh hayden christensen in the vader makeup um wow wow <sighs> and then really just like bridge all the gaps you know <laughs> holy christ uh yeah dude uh i want that whatever that is yeah um yeah man hayden christensen coming back that's big news redemption That's huge news like we're already fans of him you know but just like really give him oh. one solid thing to just really go out of it because like deborah chow directing we love george lucas but like having hayden being able to work with deborah chow i have very little fears about this series no i i don't think that it's going to really like focus much on darth vader anyway i think it's going to be mostly obi-wan focused um mm-hmm. but darth vader showing up is 
And the fact that they're saying that now means that he's going to have some sort of like me. Uh, I, I, like I, I'm conf- I guess maybe let me pose this as a question to you, Christian. Mm-hmm. What sort of what sort of um, like do you think Darth Vader is going to be in this a lot or no? I think he'll be looming the whole time, and then the big conclusion is their duel. Okay. Um, also, I really like write all this down, folks. Like, I do think <laughs> that the helmet will crack because you assume they'd get James Earl Jones back to do the voice, right? Like, if you're getting Hayden Christensen back and he's just on set in the suit, that's not what people want, you know? Like, crack the suit, crack the helmet, let him, no voice modulation, just, like, spar vocally with Obi-Wan, you know? Right, right. Like, I I think that's what we're getting. Because I can't imagine, I mean, maybe they do this, but I, I don't know if we'd get in a world where Hayden is the voice and they like mess with it a little bit unless they want to like pass that torch from james earl jones because like he is aging but yeah but i mean like i don't think i don't think hayden could pull that off to be honest with you i mean they got got sound wizards you know they can do some magic on it you know sure but not as convinced (laughs) yeah uh all right well, well let's let's get through some of the more of these um next one that we have here is andor Obviously, this is the one that we've been talking about for a while. Um, a, it, it has to be a prequel to Rogue One, obviously, focused on Daigo Luna's Cassian and Andor. Um, it was first announced in it first announced in November 2018. That's a long time ago. It's longer than I thought it was, but we didn't know the title until now. The title is Andor. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a sizzle reel, which was pretty cool, with some concept art. Um, pretty funny. Some of the shots were like, like they were wearing masks. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed that. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, final release date hasn't been announced, but it's been described as, quote, a tense, nail biting spy thriller. And that's going to be on Disney Plus in 2022. I'm like, all these shows, their pitches are just hitting me, man. I know, I know. <laughs> They're all what I want. <laughs> the spy thriller thing is like perfect for Cassie and Andor. Absolutely. Because. Cassian is like one of my favorite new Star Wars characters just because like the role he fills and Diego Luna as an actor what he brings to Cassian it's it's so good like I just want more of that flesh that like explore that and that's what this is gonna do in a really cool sounding show I don't think they talked about it here but I do think it was confirmed previously that Alan Tudyk is back as K2 ah yes so like man ooh. also it's gonna be 12 episodes for the season Oh, did they did they announce that too? I, I must have missed that. But. Yeah, so this is a twelve episode season, which is uh, four more than Mando and Clone Wars. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think I, I think this show is going to be a hit. Honestly, um, yeah. people are familiar with the character. Rogue One was like you know pretty popular, I'd say, um, with the masses as mm-hmm. it is. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty excited for that. Moving on uh the bad batch tv show this is not this is not news but we did get you know a sizzle reel from it Mm -hmm. i I would almost call it a trailer you know there's a lot of footage in that thing okay yes a trailer yeah you're you're definitely right more of a teaser trailer but totally um so yeah we're gonna get it uh you know it was previous previously reported in july but um we're gonna be centering on the bad batch um, set after the Clone Wars, uh, after the Galactic Empire rises, um, yeah, I, I guess they'll be staying as mercenaries. These these ones, Mike. Um, you know what's yeah. super cool? I I'm stoked for this show for many reasons. Um, I'm like not as hyped about it as you are. Really? Well, I should I should say that it's going to be releasing next year, 2021, on okay. Disney Plus. Um, so last week I rewatched the Bad Batch arc because I was right. just curious. Um. Because you put it well, I've been very excited for this show. <laughs> um, but based on the trailer, um, it's cool because we sort of explored post Order sixty six, like the aftermath immediately with the Jedi perspective here and there. I don't feel like we've ever seen it from the Imperial side, and it looks like Bad Batch might explore that because we've seen a couple shots in this trailer of like Hunter and the Batch hanging around was hanging out with some stormtroopers you know like and we get to see the first galactic empire speech of like palpatine yeah. talking to a bunch of clone or clones slash stormtroopers like 
That's super exciting to me. Also, the logo transition at the end that is Star Wars The Clone Wars, it burns up to the Bad Batch, like, and the fact that Filoni's involved. This is Clone Wars Season 8, Mike. <laughs> it is Clone Wars Season 8, essentially. Um, yeah, it... It's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty cool. I, I guess I'm just not interested because of maybe the marketing because they've just been saying it's like the bad batch. I need to watch that that trailer over again um, because I didn't realize that there were shots of them like hanging out with stormtroopers because that was a big question of mine. I was like, are they gonna like be imperial mercenaries now? Because um, mm -hmm. so yeah. Mm -hmm. I, no, was, I mean, what were you gonna say? When, when the episodes came out earlier this year, we were speculating that maybe because they are mutated, they don't have the inhibitor chips or they don't work the same way. So like that's what I was thinking. Like I don't mm -hmm. know. Uh, I I didn't look into this a ton, but people were also speculating that they saw like Cody in the trailer. Like who could know? Because it's a clone. But um, yeah, man, I'm really excited for the show. I hope it's in the first couple months of 21. You know, right. like just as a. If Mando season two, season three isn't hitting until Christmas, like maybe get this out in like March, like maybe February, like Clone Wars time, hopefully, because there's not much else next year, I think. A lot of the things we thought could hit next year, like Cassie and R22, so. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe we'll see this like mid-year next year. Sure. Um. So yeah, pretty cool. Good news. Um, moving on, we, we did talk about how the Mandalorian is supposed to drop Christmas next year. Uh, season three that is of that show mm -hmm. um and we also got some more information about taiko Watiti's star wars movie it's got a funky logo man i don't know if you saw that i did it was um like a, a turquoise background with a hot pink star wars logo uh right front of the show jack martin said it gave him star wars holiday special animated segment vibes <laughs> specifically boba fett mm -hmm. so I've seen a lot of speculation on that front. Like, do you think this is going to be animated, or do you think it's just like Taika doing his his Taika thing? Because he is very uh, much into that Thor Ragnarok neon style. I think it's just him doing his thing. Mm -hmm. Personally, I mean, I could see maybe it's an animated movie, I, I, but I doubt it. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you. I think it will be live action. I think you get Taika for a big budget thing. You do live action. Um, I. Regardless, though, I I do hope that he gets to flex the way he does um because he has a very much his own style and he gets as much of that across in thor i think that he can in a studio setting and if he can do that for star wars as well that'd be awesome and kathleen mentioned like they got him because it's taika you know she says like he has his own unique brand of humor and storytelling so totally yeah i'm excited for this i mean the screen rant article speculates that maybe that this is the release for the december 19th 2025 slot oh that has stocked out so yeah it's in the works hearing that like <laughs> i'm gonna be 29 i'm gonna be a couple months away from 30 at that point Ugh. it's pretty messed up man i know oh my god all right well moving on from that uh we're supposed to also get a droid story um it's supposed to be an adventure series combining animation with ilm's visual effects uh it'll in introduce a new hero guided by rcd2 and three and c3po um this seems cool yeah. star wars is always good about their droids yeah i love r2 so give him a show why not <laughs> why not yeah i'm sure anthony daniels will be doing the voice yeah. as well that would for sure and then lastly uh we have a new show star wars visions um this is like weird as hell but i'm like into it i'm mm -hmm. ready to i'm ready to see what they come up with um because it's announced that star wars visions is going to explore the star wars galaxy uh through some of the best world's best anime creators um it's going to be a series of animated short films celebrating star wars uh yeah so pretty cool I'm glad you mentioned it is specifically coming from Japanese animation studios because that means it's a series of anime short films. It's Star Wars anime. Yeah, it's supposed to include 10 of them as well. 10 anime short films, Mike. And the other thing too, the way Kathleen announced this was like, we're pulling from the 25,000 years of Star Wars history. Like, f everything's on the table. This could have some old Republic stuff. This could have some higher public stuff. That's cool. That's really cool. Some far future stuff. Like, 
Man, we don't even know. It seems like they were just like, they went up to these Japanese animation studios and they were just like, just be weird. (laughs) Do it, like, pick a timeline, pick an era. Like, they probably talked to, like, Pablo Hidalgo. He's like, here's the timeline. We're sending it to all of you. Pick where you want to make your anime short film and do it. And man, this is, I think there's so much potential here. This is, this is so cool. Oh, for sure, man. I'm super excited. Do you think um, Studio is it ghibli or ghibli I, i've heard I never both know. ways um you know what i'm talking about yeah. uh do you think they'll be involved i would imagine i don't think like uh miyazaki you know like the the guy there so. i don't think he would do one that'd be super cool if they got him to but that'd be so cool so cool yeah like ghibli i think is a a safe bet they've worked with disney before like i think ponyo was a ghibli disney movie from like the tw- early 2010s so i could see them get one um Cool. yeah I, I can't name a bunch of other specific anime studios i'm a fan of anime at times but um i don't i don't know specific ones that go to like i don't know who makes my hero and naruto but like i don't know shonen i know it's a magazine but yeah i mean i i have no idea I mean, it, it sounds really cool so because yeah, like imagine remember i don't know if you remember this i don't remember if we talked about it on the show before but like near the initial purchase there was a rumor like well before we started this show there was a rumor that one of the films they were going to do was set in the old republic directed by Zack snyder and it was going to be a seven samurai type movie interesting like exploring that concept not necessarily like i'm not saying get Zack snyder because he does not work on anime but like doing like a jedi centric story in the old republic in this style would be very very cool and i want all of it i'm sure you'll get that especially i didn't know that 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 caveat that is going to span all twenty five thousand years of star wars history mm-hmm. um so it looks like they're definitely digging in into the legend stuff um it makes me wonder if it's going to be canon or not it may be that sort of like a, cer- a certain point of view sort of thing mm-hmm. um uh you know up in the air yeah. but yeah it's definitely interesting i'm very much excited for it mm-hmm. um, also did you see disney plus is is, is going up a dollar yeah jet man i should have hopped on Come when on. jack did he did that three year thing for like a couple hundred or something yeah. <laughs> jack was like he's the wisest of us all i know I, I missed out on that um i saw that you wrote down in the doc though a couple things that weren't here do you want to talk about that yeah, let me just look, look, see here. Oh, yes, yes. So I wanted to just, you know, bring this up here. What's good with the Ryan Johnson trilogy that was that was uh, announced a while ago? So, um, and, mm-hmm. and, what's up with the Benioff and Weiss stuff? Well, like, I, 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 have I lost track of all this stuff? Like, it's very possible. I know Benioff and Weiss got fired. Okay, all right. So we don't, thank you for clearing like, that up whatever project they were working on we have no idea what that was could have been canceled could have been retooled um but benioff and weiss they were fired around when the final season of game of thrones wrapped up (laughs) right okay Um, this is all coming back to me yeah yeah so that's where they are again don't know what they were working on um but as far as the ryan johnson trilogy is concerned um i still think it's coming but like i think it's a ways i think it's the next trilogy you know it's a trilogy for a reason i think based on the investor meeting it's clear their focus right now is tv their next film presumably is going to be a one-off you know it's patty jenkins rogue squadron and taika's movie so i i still think that ryan johnson i think his thing is coming you know because I think clearly now they have an outline you know clear like clearly we just saw the outline we just talked about it but they're taking a break from like big screens movies for now yeah i guess if we're gonna think about the patty jenkins movie and then also uh, the taika watiti movie if those are two 2023 and 2025 respectively i guess the soonest that we'll see a ryan johnson movie theatrical release would be 2027 right so and I think at that point, it would have been, what, almost a decade since episode nine? So, like, I'm not mm, saying... That would, be a, that would be a decade, yeah. 
No, it'd be... It'd be... 2017, dude. No joke. No. Mike, Rise of Skywalker was last year. Oh, I thought you were talking about The Last Jedi, dude. Oh, sorry. No, no. I meant like The Last Skywalker Saga movie. I see. Okay, sorry. Um, I think by then we'd be ready for a new, like, go. Whether it is in episode 10, 11, 12, or if it is, like, we're starting a new, an Old Republic trilogy, right? And I think based on them showing their structure now that wasn't really present before at least in a front-facing way keep your guy that you had so much faith in on the next trilogy and just have him work away on that and plan it all out give him his time to write the whole thing i'm sure he won't be the director just let him be the lead let him be the producer and the writer of those films and they'll hit when they hit you know but right now that's not what we need right now it's tv time for star wars yeah i think they're just going to give him the next oh i don't know seven years <laughs> to figure it out because we also know he's working on knives out too right now you know yeah which is big hype yeah knives out was an academy award winning film like he's busy you know i think he's even said that he's more focused on that right now yeah he is and he said star wars i think maybe as recent as this year or the end of last year uh he said like Right now it's Knives Out 2, and then uh, then we're doing Star Wars. So unless that changed in the last like six to eight months, I, I do think his trilogy's coming, but it's when it's time for Star Wars movies to come back. You know, Rogue One, or sorry, Rogue Squadron and Taika's movie to me feel like standalones to the point where it's always been the Ryan Johnson trilogy. It's not time for a new trilogy yet. You know, it will be when we're ready and we've had enough time away from this trilogy. Yeah, for sure. Um, anyways, uh, so yeah, those are all the announcements and everything. That's a long list. Mm-hmm. Um, is there, and you know, I guess I guess we we should sort of take a step back here mm-hmm. and sort of look at all of it uh, from from the from the magnum lens, the big lens, mm-hmm. and talk a little bit about what you think Disney's strategy is going forward. It seems like they have an outline for sure. Mm-hmm. They have an idea about what they want, and it's TV, like you said. Yeah. Um, that seems that seems as like where we're going. Um, for you know going forward. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think between from like like you said a Magnum standpoint, like between this and Marvel Studios, because it's the Disney umbrella. I think Disney realizes they can make blockbusters the way they typically do and then release them this way i think covid might have given them a push like a big push to really commit to this because yeah. we've seen how hesitant they are to release like black widow uh, on disney plus but um the way kevin feige of marvel studios talked about uh, falcon and the winter soldier he said hey it's a it is a marvel studios film that is six hours long and it's being delivered the way a television show would be delivered. Like it's still a Marvel, essentially the way they approached it, the way they wrote it, produced it, acted it, edited it. It's a Marvel movie. And I think that strategy is being felt here where in a different lens, Star Wars, for me, I love the movies, but there's so much more potential, I think, with Star Wars when you tell it in TV form. So I'm more nervous about Marvel tackling TV right now just to see how that format adapts. But with Star Wars, I think it makes so much sense, you know? And this is something I think we've been saying for a while now. Yeah. Um, you know, that Star Wars works better on TV. And I realize now, I should have said macro. That's the word that I was looking for. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I totally agree with you, Christian. Um, TV is definitely just like the the best medium for telling Star Wars movies at this point. And I think the point that you made about how COVID probably had a big impact on this is very salient because I'm sure the COVID-19 pandemic scared Disney into thinking, oh, oh, we can't put everything into movies. Mm. Oh, we, we can't we can't like basically, you know, hinge our entire business model on, you know, movies coming out in theaters. Yeah. Like that must have been, I'm sure. Yeah. Also, I'll add this too. like we saw 
the Mandalorian use its new technology using like the Unreal Engine for that's typically used for video games to do their video sets and the way Favreau talked about that, the way it's clearly streamlined production, you know, less travel, they can be anywhere they want to be if the set's designed. Um, on Investor Day, Kathleen Kennedy was talking about how they're trying to, she alluded to the idea that they're trying to make that a proprietary means of shooting and they're building studios across the globe that can do that. Um, like proprietary technology? Yeah, like, like to Disney, like that is a Disney thing. Uh, which isn't surprising because like Lucasfilm is always and ILM is always really pushing that kind of thing. But like it to me, the writing is just there. You know, it's all over the wall. It's like it makes so much sense after the success of Mandalorian, how easy it is to do that. The way that Kenobi was retooled from a film to a miniseries. Um, we didn't even touch on this. The Boba Fett thing was not here, so. Maybe I saw some people speculating that Boba Fett's just in season three of Mandalorian and he's part of the crew now, you know, because if that miniseries was real, it would have been announced here. Um, so I, I do think then that, yeah, Star Wars on TV makes sense. It's a proven way to tell stories. Filoni is really smart as a creative lead. You know, he's still working on his directing chops, but... It makes a lot of sense, man. Totally, totally. Well, I mean, I think uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of Star Wars coming down the pipeline, and I'm really excited for it. And um, even more excited in the fact that this sort of uh, gives us a lot more to talk about, Christian. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of watching that we can do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's uh, another thing I was wondering too. Like, yeah. At a certain point in time with like obviously we're not there yet but mando is going to be going on as, alongside ahsoka and the republic like wh how do you think that works out do you think we get like three days a week of like a, a 30 minutes of star wars so like at the end of the week we have a 90 minute uh story progression across three shows every week like monday wednesday friday or do you think it's all the same day like how do you, different months of the year like what do you think works out that way I have no idea, man. Yeah. I think probably just like different seasons of the year. Sure. Like different shows will come out. Mm -hmm. that, that'd be um, ideal. Because I know CW yeah. started messing with that stuff with Flash of like Monday's Arrow Night, Wednesday's Flash Night, Friday's Black Lightning. So like yeah. that's overwhelming to me. So I'd prefer if it was seasonal like you just said. Yeah, you know, just like winter is when we release the Mandalorian episodes, mm -hmm. right? Or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, uh, well, is there anything else that you want to say uh, on all this? I think I'm pretty tapped out. Uh, there, it's just very exciting. <laughs> yeah, I I feel great about Star Wars right now. Um, I'm super excited. I am a little surprised. I did really think we were getting a lot of Star Wars content next year, which we st we're still getting a good amount. It's just not as much as I thought we were. Um, 2021 will probably be a light year as well considering mando doesn't start until basically 2022 and we have the bad batch until then but yeah i'm excited i love everything i saw everything i heard uh i feel confident moving forward based on what they told us and showed us and um for the people that were anxious with the sequel trilogy i think you can put that to bed you know, move on. They got a couple good movies out of that thing. And uh, a new era, a new time, new plan. New era, new time. That's right. Yeah. Well, uh, I think that's that's probably where we should end it. I mean, I, Christian, you're usually better at the outro than I am. So if you want to take it away from here. Sure. Mike, what's your Twitter? Uh, at Mike P. Connors. Give it a follow. Very nice. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch at Chris N. Buckley. This podcast's Twitter is at Jedi Knights JC. Uh, we are on YouTube. If you're watching the video version, youtube.com slash joyclicks is where you are. Uh, we Jack Martin and I sat down last week and had a similar conversation about the upcoming Marvel slate. So if you're curious about that, you can check that out on Excelsior. Um, but the show here is also available on podcast services, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever podcast service you choose. Uh, if you can rate a review on that platform, it would be greatly appreciated because it helps us share out a ton. 
and uh, keeps us going. We're rapidly approaching episode sixty-six, so uh, we got to do we got to do some planning for that, Christian. Oh, we do. We we already have some things kicking around that are going to be very yes. fun for yes. episode sixty-six. Um, so look forward to that. Probably that will be in the new year because I think we're taking a couple weeks off uh, for the holidays, yeah. but look forward to that. Um, should be should be back next week though because we got another episode of the Mandalorian. Exactly. So look forward to that. Uh, I'm excited for that one. Uh, if you want to get involved further though, patreoncom slash joyclicks one two five dollar tiers and get producer credit like Aaron Easton does. So thank you very much. Um, and yeah, I think that'll do it. So until next week, we're fine. Everything's fine. How are you? May the force be with you. Hello there. This is where the fun begins. General, can